Protein is the second most abundant compound in the body, following water. The proteins in our body contain 20 different types of amino acids, which are known as alpha amino acids. These compounds are formally called alpha amino acids because the amino and carboxylate groups are both attached to a central carbon atom known as the alpha carbon. The general structure of an amino acid has an alpha carbon, carboxylic acid, ammonium and a variable side chain R group. The identities of the R groups distinguish the 20 standard amino acids. The R groups can be classified by their overall chemical characteristics as hydrophobic, polar or charged. While carboxylic acid is at deprotonated form and ammonium is at protonated form. At a neutral pH, amino acids take zwitter ion form, in other words, a dipolar form. In the zwitter ion form, the amino acids contain both a negative and positive charge. When the pH of the environment changes, amino acids lose or gain hydrogen ions. At lower pH, since the system is acidic, the carboxylate anion with an alpha amino acid gets protonated. When the pH is higher, meaning at a more basic system, as the number of hydrogen ions which contribute to acidity is much lower, the alpha amino acid gets deprotonated by losing the hydrogen ion at its amino group. The strength of an acid in a solution is quantitatively defined with an acid dissociation constant Ka, also known as acidity constant or acid ionization constant. It is the equilibrium constant for a chemical reaction known as dissociation in the context of acid-base reactions. pKa values of amino acid side chains play an important role in defining the pH-dependent characteristics of a protein. For instance, the pH dependence of the activity displayed by enzymes and the pH dependence of protein stability are some properties that are determined by the pKa values of amino acid side chains. Glycine is an amino acid that has a single hydrogen atom as its side chain. As it does not have any elaborate side chain, it is considered the simplest amino acid. Glycine is the only amino acid with no asymmetric, or in other words, a chiral carbon because it has two hydrogens attached to an alpha carbon. Acid base properties of glycine are most important. In aqueous solution, glycine itself is amphoteric, which means it can react both as an acid and a base. At low pH, the molecule can be protonated with pKa of about 2.4, and at high pH, it loses a proton with a pKa of about 9.6. Now, we will show you how to plot a titration curve to identify amino acids based on their pKa values. In this video, the amino acid we used was glycine. For this simple protocol, you need a 0.4 mole glycine solution at pH 1.5. We used the glycine powder to prepare 20 ml glycine solution and adjusted the pH to 1.5 beforehand. Here is the glycine solution in a falcon tube. In order to see how this glycine solution will react to addition of a basic solution, we will take measurements after every titration of 1 molar sodium hydroxide. In the very first step, we will not add any sodium hydroxide to see the initial pH. Since we are going to make frequent pH measurements, the probe of pH meter will be actively used. And in order to save time and avoid probe from drying, we dip the probe into a distal water in between measurements. We will add 0.5 ml portions of sodium hydroxide, mix the solution in the falcon by inverting, then measure the pH and finally write down the findings to tabulate the measurements. This addition will be repeated consecutively until the pH reaches around 12. This should give us enough data to plot the titration curve.
will use these measurements to plot a titration curve for glycine. The first thing you need to do is to transfer your data to an Excel sheet. We have typed in all of 25 measurements. First thing we can do is to visualize what we have. To see a plot of pH with respect to sodium hydroxide additions, simply go to insert and add a scattered curve. Next, we can name the both x and y axes. Although this graph could be informative, the identification of pKa value requires further mathematical calculations. For this, we need to define the derivative for this curve, thereby we add three new columns. The first one shows the change in volume titrated. For this, we will do a basic subtraction. As the additions were always 0.5 ml, we will see the same value for all subtractions. Second column shows the change in pH after each addition. For this, we take the difference between pH and click the right bottom of the cell to fill out remaining cells. Finally, the third column, which shows the change in pH with respect to change in volume titrated, thus the derivative. In this last one, we take the absolute value of this ratio to make the curves positive for easy visualization. Now we can plot this new data. We go to our graph, then click Select Data and add new series, which we name after EPH per D volume. For X values, we chose sodium hydroxide volume, and for Y values, we choose the derivative values. In order to interpret your new curve better, you can add a secondary y-axis. Just click Format and go to Plot Series On and Secondary Axis. The peaks we see in this derivative plot shows us the equivalence points. We have two easily visible peaks. Let's record the first one. First, let's name a new column. The x value of this first peak is 5, and the value for the other peak is 9.5. To see the other one, we can zoom into the graph. To do that, we can change the range of the secondary y-axis of the derivative plot. Now that we can see the third equivalence point, we then record it as well. Now we need to write down these values in a descending order. There is a pK between adjacent equivalence pairs. So we define pK volume and take the average of the two pairs, which will give us two pK values. Then we check these values in volume column and check which pH values they correspond to. For example, for 3, we check corresponding pH. In this case, we found the pKa value as 2.48. If there is no value matching at the volume column, we can take an average. These are the pKa values of glycine that we determined from our experimental analysis, and they are consistent with the pKa values in the literature.